Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 190. For this one, we're playing 2-5 at Aria and uh, get into perhaps some of the most interesting situations, maybe of my entire time playing poker. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. I played a session earlier in the morning at Bellagio. It went well. You can see the recap of that one in the previous vlog if you haven't yet. After taking a nap, I'm back on the Las Vegas streets. This time, I'm making my way to Aria. It's been a little while since I've played here, but it's one of my favorite properties. I didn't come just to play poker either. I came partially to hang out with Andrew Nimi, who's firing in the PLO. I was on the list for both 2-5 and 5-10. My name gets called for 2-5 first. I'm okay with that since I've already played for 7 hours today. Happy to play what should be a slightly less stressful session. Things rarely go as planned though. I buy into the game for 1,000. That's the max. It's 7.35 at night when we start. Let's do this. A half hour into the session, we're dealt King Jack off suit in the cutoff. It's a straddle pot. I raised a 30. Small blind calls, the big blind calls, we're going three ways to the flop in position, it comes king 7-3 with two hearts, we've got top pair and a decent kicker. The checks to me, there isn't too much to worry about other than the flush draw, still, we can't just be giving tourists free cards on the strip, it's best to leave that to the escort service promoters, they're professionals. I bet 50, the small blind believes that's a fair price, he calls, the big blind folds, it's down to heads up. The turn is another king, we've got trips. Small blind checks, since three kings are accounted for, it's much more likely that the opponent has a flush draw, a pair of sevens, or potentially has a pocket pair like eights. In his mind, it's probably not likely that all of a hand as strong as the one I've got. I try to play into that by betting 140. It's a little on the larger side, that doesn't seem to bother the opponent. He calls again, and now I'm somewhat suspicious that he could have a king or maybe even a full house at this point. We don't need to worry too much because the river is the jack of hearts, giving us the absolute nuts We make a backdoor full house. On top of that, the flush draw gets there. All the stars have aligned for us to win a huge pot. The small blind checks himself before he wrecks himself. This one's teed up for us. I get a running start, then bet 400 to happy Gilmore it and drive it home. I should be able to get called by any other full house, a flush, trip kings, or maybe even a worse hand if the opponent doesn't believe me. The player is deep in the tank. He doesn't seem to want to let me have this one without putting up a fight. That's totally fine with me. Ultimately, he makes the call. We show him the best possible hand. It turns out that we needed the jack on the river because the opponent shows for the vlog that he had us absolutely dominated with ace king. Ooh, wow, that's sick. I was expecting to maybe see king queen, but since he didn't three bet preflop, I couldn't put him on big slick. This is a good example of how well I've been running lately. Even when everything appears to be set up for me to lose a big pot, I'll somehow get bailed out. Poker's a lot of fun when you're on the right side of coolers. When you're consistently on the wrong side, there isn't much that's worse. We're not too far into the session and we're already up over $600. Here we've got ace jack offsuit under the gun. I raised a 15. A player in middle position calls, the small blind calls, the big blind calls. We're going four ways to the flop. It comes queen 10 8 with two clubs. We've got a double gutter. It checks to me. Since I've got multiple opponents and there's a flush draw out there, I'm not going to try and get a bluff through like I might if it was heads up. I'd rather try and see a free turn. I check. The middle position player checks as well. The turn is the seven of spades. The small blind checks. The big blind bets 35. I don't love calling or folding. I raised a 150 in a spot that doesn't make a ton of sense at all. I probably would have bet the flop with nearly every straight or set combination, so the only hands that I'm really representing are jack nine of clubs, a set of sevens, and maybe eight sevens suited. I've got a couple things going for me though. The first is that the middle position player checked back the flop and probably doesn't have much. The small blind is checked twice now and shouldn't have much either. This means I likely only have to be concerned about my raise getting through the big blind, but since there were three opponents that still had cards when I made my move, it'll add a little more credibility to my play. Also, a lot of 2-5 players aren't great at piecing together whether a story makes sense or not. They tend to think a bit more primitively. For example, they may just see my raise with multiple people in the hand and equate that with being really strong without considering my check on the previous street, which should have in reality indicated at least some weakness or a lot of weakness. I can get away with more in 2-5 than I'd be able to in higher stakes games. One by one, the players all fold, including the middle position opponent who was the one who showed the ace king in the previous hand. He asked me to return the favor and show what I have this time. <laughs> It's always fun to get some bluffs through. We're up over 700. An hour goes by before we're dealt ace-queen offsuit in the small blind. The hijack opens at 15. He's a good young player from the UK. 
The button calls. I probably have the best hand and would rather win what's in the middle right now rather than call, play from out of position, and rely on improving. I 3-bet to 75. When I'm choosing a sizing for a 3-bet, I'll start out by making it 3 times whatever the initial raise was. In this case, it was 15. Then I'll add one multiple of that bet for each caller in between. Here, there was just one. And I'll add another multiple of the bet since I'll be playing from out of position. The hijack calls, the button folds, we're going heads up, the flop comes, jack 9, 8, all spades, we've got a straight flush draw. Other than that, the situation isn't actually particularly great. We could realistically be drawing dead if my opponent has ace 10 of spades. In addition, the board will hit the hijack's 3 bet calling range pretty hard. He can have all the sets, whereas the only one that I'll always have is top set. With that being said, I still have plenty of potential and I'm not giving up. I take a stab at it, betting 85. The button must have at least a piece of the board. After some deliberation, he calls. The turn is the deuce of diamonds, it's a complete brick. I'm not sure if I want to keep firing at this. I slow down and check. The opponent surprisingly also checks. Maybe he's not that strong either. The river is the king of diamonds, it's a better card for me since I can have pocket kings and ace king that he won't have most of the time. I'll still have some even stronger hands that I may have bet flop with than check turn to set a trap. I've decided I'm going to attempt another bluff. As I look down and reach for my left hand to start assembling chips, the opponent lets me know there's no need. He folds before I even bet. There's not much better than getting a bluff through without having to even bet. We're working on acquiring a big stack here. Next we look down at 7-4 hearts in the big blind. The button raises to 15. The small blind calls. I'm getting a good price with suited cards that can make a straight. I call. We're going three ways to the flop without high expectations since our starting hand isn't great, but 7-4 of hearts under promises and over delivers. The dealer puts out 6-5-3 with two hearts. We've got a straight with an open-ended straight flush redraw. I had a royal flush draw in the session from earlier today at Bellagio, so this is the third straight flush draw that I've had within a short time frame. I've still never captured my own straight flush on a vlog, it'd be cool to do it here. The small blind checks. I check to the preflop raiser hoping that he'll have something or will at least make a bluff attempt. He comes through with about a 35. The small blind calls. I've got almost nothing to worry about. If I didn't have hearts, I'd raise. Since I've got two of them, I call. All three of us are still in and the turn is the queen of clubs. The small blind checks. Let's see if the button wants to fire a second bullet. I check to him again. He may suspect that something's up after getting two calls on the flop. He checks back. The river is the four of diamonds. It's a terrible card since now there are four to the straight. It's possible that someone else has taken the lead with 8-7 or is chopping with us or will no longer want to put any more money in the middle. The small blind checks. I can't allow this to check through. I bet 110 in order to represent a fake missed flush draw. The button has air and folds immediately. Not the small blind though. He snap calls. It turns out the four was actually a great card. We may not have gotten paid off if it had been something different. The small blind has spent way too much time studying revenge range charts and gets punished for playing three deuce offsuit. We capitalize and are up over 1100. As smooth as things are going, it's about to get even better since we've got pocket aces under the gun. An old friend from high school called me right before I looked down at him, so I had to tell him I'd call him back, and I missed filming the preflop action, but I raised a 15. Five players called to wreck my world. We're going six ways to the flop, and obviously have no chance of winning. It comes 5-4-4 rainbow. That's actually about as good as it gets without improving and having so many other opponents. It's checked to me. I should be able to get plenty of value from other overpairs. I bet 50. A player in middle position folds, the button folds, the small blind folds, the big blind folds, somehow no one had a better hand, we get it through, I bluffed a couple of times, I like to control my image so I show that I actually had it here. I did have aces on that one. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, that's... If you remember the beginning of this hand, I told you that five players called me preflop. Only four folded. The hijack called in the one seat and I didn't see it, then exposed my hand. I was distracted, plus I'm a complete idiot, not a fun spot for me to be in. The hijack is working with a lot more information than I have and may start firing big bets as a bluff to try and get me off aces, which may or may not work for him. He could also really have a monster hand like quads or a boat. After all, he called me when I bet into five players. 
Luckily, he suggests a solution. You want to take it down? Uh, if you don't mind, I mean, yeah. I'll... There's obviously a lot of confusion at the moment, all caused by me since I didn't accurately follow the action, but the opponent is cool. He says that we can check it down, or I can bet the turn with the implication that he has a worse hand and will fold. I'm always going to take option number two to bet the turn and end the hand as soon as possible. The dealer puts out the 10 of diamonds. I bet 15, expecting the player to fold like he made it seem he would. This is when things get even crazier. The dealer thought that we were just checking it down and puts out the nine of diamonds on the river. Yeah, I said I thought you said bet the turn just so I can. Oh, I didn't hear that part, but that's why I was laughing. Oh, he said okay. I said okay on checking it down, and then you. I thought you said if you want to check the turn. I thought I said check it down. Yeah, That's why you did. Bad. And then I thought you said if you want to bet the turn. I'm super confused because I obviously thought that I heard the player suggest that I bet the turn, but now he's denying it and the dealer didn't hear anything about betting the turn. The hijacks seem to be trying to play friendly. I feel like a complete jerk for betting when, hold on. Let's play back the audio from previously. Fine, I mean, yeah. Fine, I mean, yeah. Fine, I mean, yeah. I don't know what the hell is going on. This is very embarrassing for me, though. I thought you meant. Is this gonna go on the vlog? <laughs> I wild. hope not. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. right, so, I mean, whatever. I, I, I'll just. Okay. All right. The player shows that he has pocket tens for a turned full house. Now everything makes a lot more sense. The opponent told me that we could check it down or made it seem like he'd fold to a turn bet when he had the worse hand, but after hitting a two outer and me betting, he all of a sudden forgets saying anything about a turn bet and seemed to be contemplating a raise for value. This is up there with the strangest hand that I've ever played. Again, it all started from me making a mistake. That mistake somehow ends up working out huge for me because otherwise I would have gotten sucked out on and would have lost a much bigger pot. The opponent would have at least gotten two more bets out of me, but I miraculously get bailed out again, this time by messing up. Oh, God. All right. Wow. Uh, no, 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 no. Here, here, here. Yeah, yeah. Gee, that was a weird one. The more the hijack thought about what happened after the hand, the more he was bothered by it, and I don't really blame him. He for sure would have made more money had it played out normally. I feel bad about the situation, and I toss him $100 to ease the tension a little. I wanted to try and make things as fair as I could and make everyone feel okay about moving forward. That seems to do the trick. And then, just 15 minutes after that nightmare fiasco, we're dealt pocket kings under the gun. I raised a 15. A player in middle position calls, the hijack calls, the big blind puts in a tiny three bet to 55. I'm not gonna flat this and allow the other two players behind me to come in. I four bet to 165. The middle position opponent and the hijack fold quickly. The big blind is a bit stickier, he calls, we're heads up in what's already a big pot. The flop comes, ace five, deuce, all spades. That's not what I wanted to see. I consider exposing my hand again to see if we can check it down or if the opponent will fake agree to fold if I bet turn. That trick usually only works once per session though. The big blind checks, rather than check back, I bet 100 to deny equity in case he has a smaller pocket pair with a spade. I'm happy to get a fold as well. If the opponent calls, I'll still keep control of the pot, and I can check back turn in order to get to the river cheaper than if I check here and possibly face a large bet from the opponent on the turn. The big blind calls, the turn is the three of hearts. I doubt that I'm up against a straight considering this is a four bet pot. The opponent checks, I continue with my plan to check back in order to keep this pot small and hopefully get to showdown as cheaply as possible. The river is the six of hearts, the big blind checks, if he doesn't have an ace, we should be good. He probably would have bet with a better hand than kings, but I don't know if he necessarily called bet with anything worse. I check back. I'm glad that my plan worked to get to showdown. The big blind shows that he has pocket nines with a spade. He had a lot of outs. Luckily, they didn't come. We win a nice paw with second pair. I play for 30 minutes longer. Then it's time to rack up and eat with Andrew and a few other friends. This is the second session of the day for me. I played for three and a half hours and I won 11.90 and uh, just got into one of the most bizarre circumstances that I've ever gotten into and um, it was definitely 100% my fault. So uh, yeah, I had, I had the aces and accidentally exposed it halfway through the hand. The guy was trying to be nice and uh, you know, he had more information than I did at that point and was, you know, okay to basically check it down or let go of his hand knowing that I had him beat and 
and uh, and then and then a ten comes out on the turn, which is about the worst thing possible. So there's a bunch of confusion, and um, I thought he said, "Let's check it down," or if you just want to bet, I'll fold on the turn. And so that's why I put out fifteen. Obviously, he wasn't expecting to turn a full house, and um, and then he wins the pot, and then uh, he's obviously not feeling too good about the situation that I made a big mistake that ended up somehow, like, it was just weird. So anyway, I gave him $100 because uh, I felt bad about the situation. He probably would have made more than that, and I think that he was he was fine with that outcome um so anyway other than that ran really really well and uh almost had a straight flush which would have been sweet so i i played earlier that would be the vlog before this one and i won 3660 and then here i won almost 1200 so it was nearly a five thousand dollar day for me um playing about 10 hours so i played earlier took a nap and then want to hang out with Andrew and uh, decided to play again and haven't filmed a vlog from here in a while so pretty cool how it worked out but a little bit embarrassed as well about my my mistake thanks a lot for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comment section I'm always I'm always in there looking through them and uh, curious to know what your guys' thoughts are on the pocket aces hand. So that one was one that was embarrassing for me. The guy asked me in the middle of the hand if this one was gonna make the vlog, and I said I hope not, and that was definitely true because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I messed it up, and I don't think that anyone involved particularly looked too great in it, but it was a unique situation, and it is still pretty fun to include and um, and uh, and to, to see what your guys' opinions were of the situation. I haven't talked about the 50k goal in a while, but uh, I crushed that. This has been the best year that I've had in poker um, that, I've, that I've vlogged. So I don't know if you guys remember this, but I, I posted my stats for 2019 and I barely broke even for the year. It was the worst year that I've ever had. I think I won $1,000 or something. So it's, it's great to put together a year where I, where I do run well, um, especially since I, I've been mostly playing 5'10", and I'm, I've taken some big shots and some huge games, and those have gone well for the most part. October was the worst month. Actually, it was the second worst month that I had of the year. I lost $300, which isn't a big amount, but I had a 4K loss that I made a video about, and then shortly after that, I had a 10K loss, which was the biggest loss that I've ever had. Since that 10K loss, I've been on a heater. So uh, I've only lost one session and it was for a small amount. Um, but basically what that means is just a lot of winning vlogs in a row, uh, which I'm always happy to put out, but I actually really enjoy putting out losing sessions too, because you know sometimes it is hard to share uh, losing sessions, but, but I think they're super, super important and I think people can probably learn the most from those. Anyway, my point is, I kind of forget, but, oh yeah, I guess just, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, anytime anything's ever gone well in poker, you know, something, something bad happens, something, something bad is right around the corner, so, uh, more than willing to show, you know, big losses in the future, um, and downswings and stuff, but for now, you know, those aren't, those aren't, I, I have like four other videos in the pipeline, and, things go well so um, if you're if you're looking for losses it'll be a little while anyway uh, I'm gonna go over my stats for the year in a couple weeks and excited to show that video I just really enjoy sharing with you guys uh, just how poker works you know sometimes you get hot and then sometimes you just get wrecked there's nothing you can do and you feel like you've forgotten how to play hope you're all doing well Merry Christmas happy holidays See you next time and uh, stay safe. Good luck at the table. Did I say that?